Well, there are the uh, uniforms designed by the New York designer. They are pleated. They are teal, blue, and white. What is the league coming to, folks? The Charlotte Hornets showed up in the NBA with a real buzz. Pardon the pun. Their groundbreaking uniforms were a large part of that. This is the story of how those threads came to be. In the late 1980s, Alexander Julian was rocking and rolling. Running a design house out of a penthouse neighboring the New York City Public Library on Fifth Avenue, the gorgeous Stephen A. Schwartzman building, he had over 100 people working on his team. But when the Chapel Hill, North Carolina native got a call from his banker back home, the scope of his work changed. The NBA had come calling, specifically a new franchise in Charlotte. In 88-89, Charlotte will compete in the Atlantic Division and Miami in the Midwest. George Shin was the owner, and his money guy happened to be the same as Julian's. Alexander took the call and the flight, and next thing you know, we were blessed with arguably one of the most iconic uniforms in league history. He said, you know, we've, we've just got this franchise. We, we think you'd be perfect to design the uniforms. We love your sense of design, and we want to be the most fashionable uniforms that have ever been in the NBA. What a start. North Carolina, a college basketball craze state, was bringing a top flight franchise to a city whose population was beginning to swell. Charlotte is ready, and the North Carolina is ready to become a major league city. Alexander had his own style that was well known, and it involved a couple lovely colors on the palette, teal and purple. Now, that's standard, garden variety even, you might say. But at the time, the combo was downright revolutionary. To say it popped is a massive understatement. Sure, you had the Vikings in Minnesota and of course the LSU Tigers, but those were football teams. Even the Lakers unis at the time felt like old hat because we've been looking at them forever. And that's just accounting for the purple. But teal? Now that was unheard of. I'm into light blues like this teal and uh, I like the purples, uh, mauves and uh, things like that. I like spring and summer colors. So uh, he's headed in the right direction. He might be good really one day. The Hornets had even more distinct differences. Their shorts were longer and baggier. The players even secretly went to a tailor to get them taken in. But they were also pleated which was a high fashion trend, not a basketball one. So much so that some dudes were afraid that other teams might make fun of them. Some laughed at the pleats because no one was accustomed to pleats. So, you know, they, they kind of joked on us about that, you know, and the colors was something I think they was really interested in. Teal, purple, white, I mean, that's just a popular color. And I think they'd be, you know, they was interested in, in, in that regard. But the most important part was definitely an Alexander Julian specialty, literally, the stripes. I actually invented the vertical striped knit polo shirt. It seems impossible to me, but I did. Uh, and, and again, since they wanted to use me to design the uniforms, I thought that it should be something that's signature to me besides the teal and purple. And so that's when we put those bold four colors of, of, of stripes just in the jersey, not in the shorts. I didn't want it to look like, you know, a lady's outfit. I wanted it to be a, a guy's thing. The guys don't, don't wear stripes on stripes like that. It added an element of flair in addition to the boldness that was impossible to ignore and easy to like. What do you think of those uniforms? I love them. <laughs> Pretty, I like them. You're gonna come back again? I'd love to. Plus, the actual design of the garment itself was fresh too. Teal and purple are great on almost every skin color. And that's important to me. When a team feels great, you know, they're going to play great. Four on one. Larry moves into the lane, kicks back outside. Curry open. 20 footer good. I mean, I started with silhouette when I was designing the uniform. The neck opening is, is wider. The armhole is na narrower on the shoulder to, to have more ease to move. And move they did. The Hornets a name with Carolina ties dating back to the Revolutionary War fighters, didn't win a lot of games that first season. But that year was vital to the NBA experience of the decade. Um, at the beginning, we lost our very first game by 40 points to Cleveland Cavaliers. The, the, the great thing about that, the fans, the crowd gave us a standing ovation as we left the court. And you knew we was in something special. Imagine when we won. Charlotte did have some ballers. We don't hear names the likes of Kelly Trapuca anymore, but he modeled those innovative uniforms and then led that 20-win team in scoring. Rex Chapman, the one-time Kentucky great and now internet sensation, he was on that squad too. And of course, they were led by the man who was 10 pounds of basketball heart in a five-pound bag, Tyrone Bugsy Bogues. He is the shortest player in the NBA. Bo 
Hogue strips it back. Muggsy pulls up, pops, and it drops from 18. Although his arrival was a bit bittersweet, if you don't recall, he was part of the Washington Bullets team that featured him and the late Manute Bull, then both the tallest and the shortest men in the league on the same side. He only started 14 games, but he led the team in assists and steals as a rookie. The next year, they left him available for the expansion draft. Being selected meant adjusting his mindset, but the location was a perk. You know, I spent four years at Wake Forest in North Carolina, which was, you know, an hour and a half away from Charlotte. Uh, so it started to give me some comfort, uh, knowing that with the type of people that was in the North Carolina, but they was more collegiate type of fans. However, Charlotte embraced the Hornets, just happy to have a team that competed at the highest level. We're gonna win this one, baby. <laughs> uh, we was like rock stars. So every restaurant, every establishment just welcomed us with open arms. And that's the love and that's the, you know, the, the, the warmth that we had that, and the hospitality that was given. And that's one of the reasons why Charlotte became such a special place, not only for me, but for a lot of others. I don't know how you guys went out and recruit these fans, but they're true fans and I love them. They've been very supportive. In later years, this team would become special too. And one of the most fun in the league, Larry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning joined Muggsy. And to this day, photos of that triumvirate hang in the arena where guys like LaMelo Ball and Gordon Hayward now wear teal pinstripes of their own. Pass to Devontae. Oh, oh my goodness! Didn't see that coming! I'm diddly deep! Yeah. This look has to come back, right? All retro uniforms are wont to do it. And that has to be good for Alexander Julian, right? Well... Julian picked out he got paid for this project. And he didn't choose money. Instead, he picked something near and dear to him, Carolina Barbecue. Really, instead of ownership of the designs, which because of NBA licensing deals was more of a headache than he really needed or cared for, he got creative. I, I called him up and I said, George, I will trade you ownership of the Hornets uniform designs for five pounds of Carolina Barbecue a month to be FedEx to me in Connecticut. Well, he jumped on it like a wet, dirty t-shirt, but the PR aspect of it. I mean, we had a full page editorial in Sports Illustrated. I was in Time Magazine, Newsweek, the Washington Post was my favorite. The headline was Hoop Couture. Julian does pro uniforms and is paid in pork. Let's assess this trade with the benefit of hindsight. In pop culture, the Hornets had a chokehold on the game. Their colors made their gear popular with the kids, something that endures today. You know, I like, I like these colors. And for me, being a dad, especially of three girls, they like these colors a lot too. Carolina's own Jay Cole even helped renew the fervor when he rocked a vintage starter piece complete with Hugo, the cartoony Hornet logo, at the 2019 All-Star Game in Charlotte. You know, you travel all around the world, you see a starter Hornets jacket. And it was something amazing that you can see, you know, to this day, you know, when I when I still go out. And it, that's just the type of impact that we had. The league wasn't really sure how to handle all of this. The late David Stern, then NBA commissioner, was shocked by the success of a team from the county seat of Mecklenburg County in terms of style. He was sort of like, <laughs> didn't quite know how to deal with fashion and the NBA in, in, his, in his head. He figured it out when he saw how well the uniform sold. I think they were number one or, or number two um, after the Bulls for, particularly for a team that never won a championship. It was, it was something. That enthusiasm within Charlotte eventually waned and low attendance contributed to the franchise relocating to New Orleans in 2002. But I wanted to say it in New Orleans, in Louisiana. Tom Benson will be the new owner of the New Orleans Hornets. It was at that point that Julian decided to do the math. It was an expansion team and nobody thought the uniforms were gonna be a huge seller. And no, no one no one predicted that. So, you know, to trade 5% royalty on sales of the uniform copies for five pounds of barbecue, I mean, it didn't really, it didn't seem to be a lot in it at the time, right? We, add, we added it up with the runaway success of the uniforms. Um, I basically traded $10 million for a gut <laughs> right here. The Hornets uniforms weren't just big sellers, they were also trend setting. More than a dozen teams across pro sports adopted teal, purple, or both during the 90s. Meanwhile, Julian went on to be the guy responsible for Argyle winding up on the uniforms of his alma mater, the University of North Carolina. His aesthetic choices have proven to be both firmly of their time and timeless. And even as someone who's contributed so much to the world of fashion and the culture overall, the reactions never get old. 
young kids come into our store here in Chapel Hill, where I live now, to see the excitement on their face, to see because we keep an original Hornets uniform uh, here in the hanging in the store and the photograph of Kelly and I, etc. And to see these kids, you know, this many years later, get so excited uh, about it, it's 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 a real thrill.